right, welcome to Focus Podcast number 35, and I have my guest here, Aaron D'Souza. Welcome. Hi, it's great to it's uh, great to be here. Thanks for coming, and we had quite a delay, uh, audio delay, technical issues, yeah. but I'm glad we solved it, and thank you for, you know, your patience. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, technology can be a tricky thing, so, yeah. It is, and uh, it's tested my levels of patience (laughs) but that's just that's that's kind of goes hand in hand with the music business in general Mm -hmm. you know so it's like it's 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 you know lessons we've already learned yeah um so yeah we were talking a lot about uh what are we talking about we were talking about madonna prince um Obviously, that's some of your, some of your influences. Like, what's a, a more of your like a broader range of your influences? So, uh, I mean, I mean, they're they're all great. I'm just uh, gonna put this down here. So, if you don't mind. yeah, I mean, so they're all they're all great. Uh, the the artists that, that we just uh, just uh, mentioned. Um, I mean, I will say like right now, probably my top five of a of all time would be um, Celine Dion, uh, Lady Gaga, Adele, Pink. And, uh, and and share so uh, they're, uh, they're uh, yeah they're they're all fantastic and and, and, uh, and they're all different and uh, and I, I've always loved a, a variety of, of music so what's your do, do you have like a specific genre like I've seen you do like so many different styles of music what's mm-hmm. your what's your like favorite style to play um, that's hard to say I mean it, it, it's a it, it it's a mood thing, I guess. Yeah, really, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it it depends on on the song, on the on on the vibe. I mean, because uh, because now I mean, like when 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 you say pop music, it's popular music. So that could be pop or rock or country, uh, R and B, jazz, uh, ra- uh, rap and hip hop. It it depends, and uh, and uh, and it depends on on the on the song. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Get us up to speed on your material. Or do you have anything down the pipe, or is it new stuff, or uh, um, you're kind of in between creative parts? Or uh, well, uh, actually, just uh, um, last fall, I uh, I released a new, a new album. Uh, it's called uh, Florence Sheridan, which you can find on on uh, Spotify and, and iTunes. And a few uh, weeks ago, um, I was in Toronto because I I uh, took part in a, a songwriting seminar uh, for a, a song studio. So it was held uh, uh, at at Hughes Room Live in in in, in Toronto. It was a a, fu- a full week, um, and it was fun. Uh, uh, I I hadn't been around other songwriters um, in a long time, so a chance to meet people, may, maybe in the future, uh, co- uh, collaborate and sort of get their style and and how they write, and even try uh, uh, try out a new uh, new material. How do you? What's do you have a specific writing process, or is it just different? It's just um, like it's it's different every time uh, I mean uh, so I mean uh, one thing that uh, uh, for sure that happens with writing is uh, so I'm someone that does uh, lyrics first and then music because then I hear in my head uh, how I, how I want to phrase uh, the the wor- uh, words and mm-hmm. then once that's done j- just build music around um, ar- around it so that's a so that, that that's sort of my way of of doing it and then like when I write the music, um, stylistically it, it it varies, but I'm not thinking, oh, I'm gonna write in this genre or that. It just comes. Uh, but I but I love the idea of of taking uh, two or more well known songs and thinking, oh, if if like this one and that one conceived, yeah. then this would be it. Like so, a Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's not uh, reinventing the wheel, so to speak, but uh, but you're still on to something uh, different because. Uh, when when you're creating, if it sounds like one song, I'm like, oh well, then it, it's been it's been done already, so it defeats the purpose. But if it's like a mixture of this 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 and that, then it's a it's a, a combination of of all those things. I always find that it's like because people are like, oh, when you you make something, you sound like this or you sound like that. Mm-hmm. I, I also feel like it's whoever you're listening to, like what's influencing you at the time, like, and it could be a different period like you know when you're in your 30s or your 20s or your 40s like it could be totally different influences and you have different outcomes oh yeah from it as well right so um yeah 
I'm always curious about people's writing processes because I, I have different ones, but it usually comes down to one style. Uh, but I try other ones mm. a lot and I um, challenge myself in other ways too. Like usually it's a lot of the times I have write first and then something matches with it. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's going to work with that. Sometimes it's been I have instrumental and then I work off that instrumental and, and build off that. And now uh, I've... I don't think I've ever done this, but I want like completed lyrics and give it to somebody to build something around that. So that's something new that I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to like the outcome, yeah. but it's just, to um, me, it's stepping out of the comfort zone, really. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, uh, that was how like my, uh, Michael Jackson would write. So he'd have a vision, but then he, he, he'd go to like uh, Quincy Jones, for example, and, and, and he'd say, Quincy, this is what I hear. This is what I envision. Can you help me re bring this to life? Whether it's adding strings or uh, uh, rhythm or uh, um, other music, so they so so in that way they that that that's how they work together. So a friend a friend of mine uh, one, uh, once said that um, a songwriter uh, uh, um, uh, creates the blueprint of the house, and a producer decorates the house and adds. Uh, uh, um, uh, odds and ends and you know knickknacks and um, all those things so uh, it's a cool uh, an uh, uh, analogy and it also makes me wonder how like uh, Michael Jackson for example because he didn't play in an in, in instrument but he'd still uh, uh, write uh, all these great songs so you know just his process is different than someone that 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 uh, does play play an uh, instrument it's just uh, just different I think it's a feeling too. And also like if you're working with the right people, they can understand your translation or like get a vibe on what you're saying and be like, what do you think of this? And they're like, oh yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, but now maybe it's better than what I thought. Like uh, I heard the story, what was the story about? It was a beat it or like bad. I think it was either bad or beat it. And it was like Van Halen did well, the guitar. It was Beat It. Beat It, yeah. And he just came in and he was just kind of rearranged it for Michael. And and then Michael's like, yeah, okay. Like he had an idea, but he probably had an idea. Like, like you said, the vision he thought he can hear that guitar. So he just gave it to somebody who knew what to do with it. And he left him with that. So I've... I've, I've I kind of make music like that too. I was like, I know you're good at this, so I'm gonna surprise you with this beat, and I'm gonna get your reaction. So, like, I I kind of have an example of that. Um, you know, you know May, right? The saxophone player. So she did the sax for my song, The Papers. Right. And I had four instrumentals selected. So she wanted me to send her the instrumentals. So what I wanted to do was not send it to any musician i wanted them to come to the studio i would play it for them and i would read their face mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say this is the one i want to use like I, in my mind i had that's the one i want to use so i'd play the three and they would be polite they'd be like oh that's nice that's nice but then you get the genuine re i got a genuine reaction from her and when i played the instrumental she's like ooh. Like I saw her eyes and like, you like that one, right? Yeah. And she's like, yeah. And that's the one I selected yeah. in my head. So she knew she had the same vibe as me. And then she went in there and just, I let her do her thing. Like she basically, there's no cuts like that whole track. She's, she plays straight through. There's no edits, but I led her to her demise because she was like, let me work out the bridge. Let me work out this transition. And she really only had three passes. So I mm -hmm. kind of just paid her and did like you you're good at this so i let you do this and she came up with something that i never even would have drawn out what i could have never blueprinted that out right? oh yeah it's, oh yeah oh yeah i mean it happens sometimes when 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 it's like you know they've got it and they're good it's it's, it's like here you know just do your thing and 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 let's see what you can come up uh, come up with and yeah uh, and 
and sometimes uh, in in that way um, in, in a, a naive way that's how magic works like when you don't know what you're doing and you and just go for it yeah um, then then uh, then yeah you just n- uh, never know what can what can happen and and I mean like Janet Jackson I mean she's someone who like like she uh, she said that when she creates music she's like um, if I'm not dancing to it then I then it it does not go on on the record because for her it's like uh, you need to feel it yeah like like feel something from it whether it's exactly and and, and like with any song whether uh whether it's the rhythm the melody the uh the arrangement the lyrics what whatever it is uh if something makes uh makes you feel something from it whatever uh part of it it is then it's uh it's something that that you love yeah and that's when you know like uh and because like i said i can't play anything either and you just go by feeling you're like okay that feels right that feels right and i'm just gonna lean on people who are experts at this to help me dial it in but it is a feeling like it it's it really comes down to that because all the other stuff you can get people to help you with oh yeah and to me my measurement too is like if i'm not playing it repeatedly if i'm not like if it's not like something i'm excited to hear then uh, it's not going to make the cut yeah like it's got to be something that you're willing to tolerate a million times yeah. over because you're gonna have to mix the shit out of it and it's like if it's something that that slowly starts to annoy you then it's not gonna be right. something that's gonna make the cut yeah 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 i mean uh, yeah it's like uh if it's something uh you can hear five times in a row and still love it then you know that that it, uh that it's great or or it's like uh if an artist for example if they're making a, a greatest hits uh compilation then I mean they have their process of, of of picking which songs. So, whatever it is, like 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 if it's the the ones that move you the most or who have stood the 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 test of, the test of time or songs that you still like that that uh, to listen to over and over again. I mean, uh, uh, it's a it depends on 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 the artist. Yeah, exactly, and I think also it's like. Um you can really tell an artist who has a, a good range of uh, listening experience because it's like well you can tell in their music sometimes it's like oh oh they were influenced by this and this and this and this and this sure. and then and it's like the more you're uh, you know exposed to the more uh, of a unique artist you end up being I think um, so who was there like my mom always used to play a lot of music for me so I think that's where I kind of absorbed it mm-hmm. what was was there somebody or like was there a, a not a specific defining moment but was there a moment where you're like oh I want to get into music or was it like music lessons or like when did you like really feel it like this is oh this makes me feel really good um I mean, uh, I would say like for, from a young age, it was in- instinctual. I mean, the first stuff I listened to for my parents was from the '60s and '70s. So the 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 classics like uh, Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. uh, Simon Garfunkel, uh, Stevie Wonder, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, Mad- Madonna. The yeah. the list goes on. And then I and then I started taking uh, piano lessons. I was I was around six or seven. Um, singing um, started out. Uh, uh, j- just came. Um, naturally at at first and then and then uh, t- uh took lessons with the uh, with that but um but i guess i i've always loved music and not only that but when when i was 12 uh, i was diagnosed with uh, asd uh um, autism spectrum d- d- disorder and one thing that that's very common with people that are on the spectrum when they find something they they love which which may may seem like almost um obsession but it really isn't it's something they gravitate towards and and, 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 and love and, and just makes them feel good or it's their safe haven, whether it's music or whether it's, I don't know, trucks or video games or um, sports or mm-hmm. culinary arts, what, what, whatever it is. So in, in my case, it's music and, uh, and it's, and it's, it's certainly uh, uh, um, uh, carried me, uh, uh, me, uh, me through a, a lot, uh, a lot, a lot of things. Did you uh, have this diagnosis as a child, or you didn't find out until twelve? So uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I found out when, um, when I was uh, around, around 12. I mean, uh, I mean, before that, because back then, uh, I mean, in, in some ways, um, a, uh, ASD is still very misunderstood. Yeah. Al- although now there, there yeah. is more awareness about, about it. But, ba- but, but back then, uh, uh, um, it was uh, uh, there. There wasn't much um, understanding uh, um, uh, of it, but but uh, but but I mean, uh, uh, the more the more you know and and learn about uh, about about something, then then it's like okay, now uh, now we know uh, what it what it is. So le- uh, let's educate ourselves and 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 create more awareness so that um, because. Um, um, uh, uh, people can be afraid of what's unknown to them, but w- but when they know more about it, then it, then, then it's not uh, not so scary mm-hmm. or or not so odd or or uh, not uh, not so weird uh, quote, uh, quote unquote for to to them. Yeah, and it's interesting you said uh, like when you folk you can once you find something you like, if you can focus in on it, and I like, obviously when you sing you, the. Like you don't have any speech impediments, or not as much as when you're talking. So like that artistic part must like bypass something in the brain, or because uh, like I'm 45. Are you are kind of same age or like, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be um, I'll be 36 in a in a in a, cu- a couple weeks. Actually. Yeah. So even even like us 10 years apart, like um, even for your childhood like a lot of stuff like that was misdiagnosed and it would just correct me if i'm wrong but would it just be like kind of categorized into a, like a learning disability um like um, did they did they like when in school did they just because i was put in a, a different class because they didn't know how to read and they didn't know how to deal with it right so was there somebody who kind of knew how to you know um what I'm trying to say is like, uh, was there any imp- impediment impediments in school and stuff like that? Um, keeping up with. So I I mean uh, I would, I mean with um with school uh, uh it did it did uh, have its uh, uh challenges I mean uh but actually uh high uh high school uh, uh um w- uh, was pretty good because I uh, I I was in a in a school that 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 still uh, still had like uh, all the all the regular su- uh, subjects and and all the uh, extracurriculars like the arts and sports and everything mm-hmm. but they uh, but they uh, also had something uh, for students who uh, who had um, so, uh, so some sort of learning learning di- uh, di- challenge or di- uh, disability uh, called an IEP in in, okay. in uh, individual education plan so what yeah. it, uh, what it, uh, what it means is that for certain things like tests or or exams you're given some accommodations like extra time or clarification yeah. on, on a on a question or even the the use of a, a computer uh, using a a, di, a a different room or a different device if you had a hearing disability yeah, or I mean, anything yeah yeah I mean yeah. Uh, uh, d- uh, depends on the on on the person yeah uh, cuz cuz I the reason why I'm saying that is like cuz the classes that I was in it was just almost like that stuff wasn't around right when I was a kid, right. so if you had a disability like that, it was kind of we just fell through the cracks. So I'm like, I'm happy to see that, like a decade later, that you know there are programs that keep everybody on the same pace too. And also, it's really interesting that you found music. And uh, is it like you must have because you just gravitated towards music because you like it, mm-hmm. but. Was there a point where it's like, oh my goodness, like this is an outlet from what I'm going through with what? Um, I, I mean, uh, I mean, I've I've always loved it, and 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 as I I, uh, I said er, uh, um, earlier, it's it's always been a a saving grace for me, mm-hmm. and 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 it's uh, and it's uh, 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 helped me through a lot. Like um, there are studies that show that if you have a talent in the arts, like music or something. Then you, uh, it helps you do better in math and history and uh, uh, science and all those things because yeah. it gives you uh, that uh, confidence you need. Or in some cases, uh, um, if you love uh, extracurricular uh, 
activities, whether it's band or sports or student council, then well, in, in my case, in, in high school, if you wanted want to do uh, all those things, you could. Like there, there, there were no limits um, on that if you had a, 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 a challenge or a disability. The only th uh, 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 thing was just to make sure you keep your, keep your grades up so that so it's like oh well if I want to do this then it it, it makes that it it creates that balance and also that drive of like well if I want to do what I love you also have to uh, um um wa uh, watch your grades and yeah. and and keep up with your with your work and uh and and the good thing w w was that like for example in student council so in grade twelve uh, I um I uh, ended up being um deputy pri um, prime minister of student council and uh, and um. And for that, it wasn't uh, uh, based on a, to a, a, a top student or 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 if uh, or if, if someone did did have a challenge, that's not for you. It, it, it didn't work, work, work like that like that at all. As long as you may maintain good good grades and 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 if, and if you had that school spirit and and wanted to um, bring that in the in the community, that uh, that was the mo most important thing. Yeah, because that's what really what the criteria is and that's what the point of it is right it's like the passion is it doesn't really how yeah. it's kind of translated it's like what's coming from within well yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well yeah I mean because I mean you can't you can't li uh, limit students uh, based yeah. on if they ha have some challenge because you know you never know uh, what what what, uh, what what they could 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 be and so I mean uh, I mean I mean grades uh, uh, obviously they're part of a, uh, of a of a school system but they shouldn't define you know, uh, 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 your your intelligence or your your ability or what you're 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 capable of your, of of, a, of achieving or your passion. You might not. Uh, the thing too uh, interesting is like you might not be aware of what you're passionate about yet until you're introduced to something in school. Because I didn't. I had to do a. I did a co-op my last year and there was nothing interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Like I, I basically went to like it was like almost like a tech school. So there was a lot of options for like auto body shop, uh, you know, office, all this traditional stuff. And I was like, I don't want to do any of that stuff, but I still want to do the co-op. So I went. But you want something that that, uh, that, uh, that interests me. Right. Exactly. So I was interested in cameras and I started messing around with a beta camera and stuff like that. And I was like, well, I need something that is interesting to me because I have to pick something for school. And, not, and none of these things interest me in, in my school. So I proposed, I was like, can I go to Rogers and, and do an internship there? And they're like, well, nobody's ever done that. So I was like, why can't I? I just went for an interview and I was like, I like, you know, I would like to be in production and all this stuff. And they're like, okay. So I was the first in my school to do a AV multimedia uh, course and it was just because trailblazer this is what I like this is what I was and then I was ne I've never been afraid to be like why can't I be the first person to do it why why do I have to wait for somebody to implement this idea right. so I proposed that to them and they were ecstatic they're like oh we never even thought of that and then when it came to like our presentations I, I like pulled in the TV and I got to do like this video display where everybody else just had like a you know Today at the office, I serve coffee for people. And so I've always been like that. And this is kind of the same thing. You know, I'm not waiting for somebody to say, there's the door. I'm just like, what I'm curious with. And, you know, I'm going to try it. And uh, I think that's important. Like we were talking about with, with school and, and like, you know, basic scoring shouldn't, that shouldn't be, be the criteria. That should be like a guideline maybe, but the criteria should be like setting up an environment for a student who can thrive on something that they're oh, yeah. interested in. Definitely. So once you find out what you're interested in, then there's, there that should be like the motivation. That should be the teaching. That should be, and I was lucky because I went to a very, uh, prestigious like art school in Toronto here in grade seven and eight. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Winona. It's like St. Clair oh, okay. and Winona, and it's I'll have to look it up. It specializes in theater and music, mm -hmm. and I had no interest in music at the time. I right. was like 12 years old, right. but I love. 
doing sketches with my friends and just like like comedy yeah mostly comedy and this is early 90s so it was uh the time that living color was around yeah so like every day for homeroom we would have an acting class mm -hmm. and we would do sketches and just just joke around and then if you were in music you would do music every day so we had art every day so we did we also did you know basic science and math and right. english classes right. because i this is a long story but i had gone to a french immersion school when i was in grade one or in grade two so Sabia? this was very experimental in the 80s so it was like not grading the kids it was letting the kids get their own place it was super hippie it was like oatmeal lunches and, mm. and like like vegan lunches so like this is this whole wave that's coming out now it's like i already lived it in the 80s so like everything we said you know it has its trial and error right so the trial the error was i don't think the students were being pushed enough individually because it was like this is the criteria and this is how it is so none of the kids really yeah. were advancing and learning and so it was like a, a, a one size fit, fit uh, yeah fit pretty much mentality. but it was i think maybe they were trying to please too much and and it wasn't i don't know what the case was anyways but all the parents pulled the kids out of this the school because it wasn't working right so i went to a regular school uh, uh regal road and um davenport and it's like oh let's test everybody's reading levels so everybody had to read out loud and i couldn't read because those three years we never like we weren't pushed at all and i didn't learn to read at home at all right so they're like oh he's slow let's just put him in that class so right then and there i had frustration because i was like no i just need to catch up with my reading so yeah. i fell behind grade four five and six and then by the time i got to grade seven and eight i had still at like a grade three reading level. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's all it's all a matter of, of finding what programs um, work for you because then when when you're labeled uh, um, uh, any of the of the of those things, like what's that what's that going to do to your uh, your confidence when when it crushed it when I was a kid because I was like they're like oh today we're gonna learn to do the letter A and I was like really it's like yeah it's exactly they're like it's you get my confidence got completely crushed and by the time i got to grade seven i was just like there was a lot of things going on like like you know parents were getting divorced there was a lot of stuff that was behind it yeah and then i just shut down yeah. and i was like i don't want to listen to you this and this and there was one teacher that broke through to me and she was very patient she helped me get up to pace with my english but my mom stepped in and like 11 or 12 years old she's like i gotta get something to him that he's interested in she gave me like a john gershom book like cute the firm and i started reading shit like that at 11 because it just i don't know what it was it was a challenge and at the same time it was just maybe a subject that i could get into and maybe the style of writing it was like i could understand it so that's how i learned to read and write like and then even out of college uh, you know, I just started picking up books and, and, and so that helped me later in life with the lyrics and the writing and stuff like that. And even like, I have a really tough time with, with my memorization of my lyrics too. Mm -hmm. So it's like for a, like a normal performer, it would, you know, take a few tries, but me, it's like, I really, really have to hammer that in. And it's always been like that for me. It's always been... It's always been a bit of a struggle but once i get it it's like it's embedded forever so like the three albums that i have they're pretty much stuck in my head now yeah so but it took a like a lot of hard work like and i still have to practice all the time yeah uh, yeah uh, yeah i mean uh yeah i find i find now like in 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 schools like with uh, with students like when when um when a, a assistant uh, doesn't um work for them then it's never one thing. It's it's always in a, a, a an accumulation of things, uh, where, whether it's stuff that the, that's happening behind behind the scenes and uh, and and 
And it just takes that one teacher to like really just um, uh, take the time and, and say, okay, what's going on? Are you okay? Let, let not let not judge a, a student, but just yeah. you know, um, just ask them and and be willing to uh, listen to them. And then so they so they feel like they can find someone and and, and say, well, you know, li- uh, life's pretty heavy right now. It's complicated. I'm going through this 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 and that. Mm-hmm. So you know, uh, uh, it just. Uh, it just takes that one person who um, who uh, um, believes in you no no matter no matter what. Yeah, and like you said too, it takes that interest. You know what I mean. So you found music, and it's like now you can. There's something that excites you, and drives you. Um, so, what was your first? Because uh, I remember meeting you. This was like more than ten years ago, probably. Give or at, take. At the open mics. So when did you first uh, get on stage and like uh, perform? And then from there, like when was like your first show? So, um, like the first like the first time I was ever on stage. Well, or, or yeah, when? or like performed on stage, and then like when did you like first start getting in the in the scene? Like when you're checking out open mics and stuff. Um. So well, well, uh, well I mean, um. I think the the first time I was ever on stage or or, uh, or or performed in front of a crowd. So I was six years old, and I think um, I was probably singing. Uh, uh, I think the story goes, I was probably singing to myself. I I don't know, and then someone at school just took notice, and and then and then I, I uh, remember just uh, singing in in front of these um, older kids. So it was a whole new world from a, a, a Aladdin. Uh, growing up, I I love I love Disney, still do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, just um, just saying that for uh, you know, uh, 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 and they enjoyed it, and I'm like, oh okay, I, I guess like maybe 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 there's something uh, in in there that that uh, the that you have that's uh, the that, that's great, and I'm like, well, what did I know? I mean, I mean, I mean, I was six, I was you know not naive, um, so but uh, but um, it goes from there, and then just snowballs into just more and more and more, and the more you do it, the better you get. Uh, I would say with the uh, open mics, uh, I mean, pay, uh, Payne Lady, that was where, where, I, where I met you. So uh, a friend of mine from college, uh, he um, ha- had a show there, and I was like, oh, it's, it's an open mic night. Interesting. But, but when I got there on that day, the list was full and it was too late. So, like, so, I, so I came back on a, di- a different day and, and learned how the process worked, where it's like, oh, okay, you're, you're allowed um, two songs, and, and you can sing like either on your own or with a, with a band. So it's a... a uh, it's up to you, and then it's through those op- those open mics that you meet other musicians, make those connections, meet uh, meet people, and and uh, and actually that that was when I um, when when I um, met someone who uh, uh, through 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 the open mic who ended up uh, uh, producing my my uh, my uh, my fir- my first record. So who was it? It, uh, it was Ty- uh, Tyson Cody. Maybe maybe you know who. I think so, maybe yeah. Maybe that name is from. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, so uh, he he plays um, guitar. He sings. He writes, and uh, uh, he uh, he's um, also d- done a bit, bit of a bit of comedy. Um, so and, and uh, yeah, and when I when I first uh, met him, I, I think I I, I played uh, uh, keys on a, a couple of, of his songs, and but we met at at pay, at Pain Lady, and then I just showed him some uh, rehearsal footage I was doing of my own stuff, and. And then he uh, uh, said, "Oh, I wouldn't mind produ- producing it." And uh, and one thing that we had in common was um, a good sense of sense of humor. So I'm like, "Yeah, he's he's my guy to <laughs> to work with." So like you know, just like when you sort of dig the same things and 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 have similar per- personalities, that that's great when you when you uh, when when you work with uh, with, with people. Yeah, and it's it it's so true. It has to it has to click like that, and you have to be. Um, you know, joker. You have to have somebody you can joke around with. Um, Painted Lady is one of those places that just like you're looking for something and you find it's it. the vibe. You find. I had that with Not My Dog, which is a. I'm not sure if you heard of Not My Dog, but it was like a hole in the wall in Parkdale, mm-hmm. and that's where I met a lot of the musicians I work with, and then that carried over to Painted Lady once I was. Right. Doing that in Painted Lady too, so I, it's exact same story. My 
my buddy Roger, who does a lot of the guitar for me and the keys. You might have seen me play with him there a couple times at Painted Lady. Probably. But he, it's a funny story. And that day I was at TD Bank doing uh, my banking. And this guy, Roger, was doing my banking. So I get to the Painted Lady that night. It was an open mic night. And it was the night that uh, Bowie died, David Bowie. Oh, maybe. So I'm at the bar. May you rest in peace. Yeah. But that <laughs> night was magical, man. Everybody brought their A game. That was insane that night. I, I'll never forget that night. Anyway, so I'm at the bar at Painted Lady. And I look over and I was like, here's the dude who was doing my banking earlier. And I was like, hey, what's up? And he goes, you do music? And I'm like, yeah, I do music. So we were like, I heard his set and I was like, oh, that's, I like that. And he heard my set and he's like, oh, I really like that. So I don't know if we did that night. I think we might have collabed that night. Like he might have jumped on guitar with me that night. And then instantly I was like, hey, this guy has the same vibe as me, the same sound. And then I was halfway through my second album and I was like, I need a sound that's going to complete some of these tracks. And I just had a good feeling about him. And I was like, hey, do you want to come over to my place? So he recorded uh, guitar on like three of the songs. And I was like, hey, this, this guy is going to help. And he has. He defined like a new sound for me. Nice. And uh, I ended up playing with him and Wayne for a lot of shows. Like it was just the two, of, the three of us together. And uh, yeah, it and Roger's a lawyer now, so he helps me with a lot of legal, like legal advice. And actually, he's the one who helped me uh, draft the grant, or not the grant, but the proposal for us to play in the park. Right. So he knows how to speak, uh, you know, political dialogue. Yeah, and yeah, and, and all. And all he the, knows what the they, legal jar uh, they like jargon. So he told me he said because. <clears throat> The city needs a waste management plan anytime you do an, uh, an event. So he said the, the thing that they really like is tell them you're going to get rid of the garbage. Right. Don't They don't want to send out extra people to. So that's what I included. I said we will. And I did. Actually, we collected all the garbage and we just tied it to a couple bags at the gazebo. So yeah. stuff like that, that, that's really helped me. But yeah, like I said, all the way back to Painted Lady. It was a special place, and it still is. And I remember, like, I guess we could call it class of 2017 or whatever. But that year specifically, the year that, like, um, uh, Nelson started it, well, there was something special about I that. Think, because uh, I, think, I, I think it was in uh, uh, 15. Yes, you're right, around so. that time. Because I just moved to downtown, and it was very accessible for me. Right. But there's right. quite a few people that have come out of that that year that we all used to go there mm -hmm. that are massive stars now like do you remember uh jeremy albino he's i do fucking massive man yes like and but he took like I, re I remember him yeah, coming up, really, really well yeah i remember him coming up to me at open mic and be like that's like he was one of the, the the many artists that encouraged me he was like great stuff you know keep doing your thing and that that was so cool about that open mic is that the bar was so hot. Mm -hmm. Everybody that got on stage, it was just like, wow, 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 yeah. wow, wow, wow. And it didn't matter what genre you were, what style you were, what look you had. It was just like quality, 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 quality. Oh, yeah. It's, and it's like you yeah. were sitting there in the crowd and you're like, I got to bring that too. Right. And so it brought everybody's A game and it also created an environment where people thrived and people grew out of and and our good buddy ace and abby he used to go all the time to evan and he's a massive star now so it's like it's these these families of open mics have created like you know environments for people to explode out of oh yeah and, and i think it's it, it's a tribute to toronto and it's a tribute to like our like you know vast array of um different styles of music and different cultures and different, you know, backgrounds and stuff like that. And it's just, everybody's in it for the music. That's the cool part. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's not it's not a not a a competition. Uh, no. I mean, so I mean, I mean, yeah, like uh, it um, it it helps us to bring bring the best of our of our of ourselves because I mean, uh, uh, uh you know, you, uh, you can't really can um c compete with with anybody uh because um, you know every everybody's different you know you know they they all they all have their style they exactly. they all they all have their muse they all have uh uh what they what they br uh, bring to the the table so so there's no better or worse just 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 different and, and um and also it's uh, interesting like when you mentioned that that when you when you went uh around when uh David Bowie had passed and how the night was so magical I actually remember going there uh once and it was Around when uh, when Prince died, yeah, so, it was close. It was a, it was a few months apart. I think. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and, and I remember uh, uh, Nelson and his uh, his band. So um, before the uh, open mic portion, they did a, a, a little tribute to Prince, and and they did uh, I think it was uh, Kiss. Uh, I was there that night uh, too. Yeah, yeah. They sang I think Kiss. They sang uh, Crazy. Uh, Nineteen ninety nine, and they and they closed off with his big song, yeah. Purple Rain. I was there. I think I was there that night. Yeah, that was that was a magical night, and uh, it was a buzz. Like it was, and so to bring out of that, like Nelson kept it going through the lockdown, and he had it online, and that was like he did. That was there was nothing going on. So those Mondays, that I really looked forward to that. Like that was they like, were fun. Yeah, I set up. My little lights in the back yeah. room and I was like ready and like that was like all we had so he kept it going and then and then I don't know if you remember when things were kind of like hush hush like what's open what's not it was very like on the down low only with us it's open mm -hmm. we're not gonna say anything so they started opening it and and Nelson started off it again and that's where I met uh, EM Lord Earl Nelson kind of put us together mm -hmm. and then you know like you do the open mics for so long so many nights I had to get out of it because uh, I work every night and it was like you have to pick and choose how many nights you actually go out right yeah. so it's a balance it, exactly so I kind of burnt out from it and also kind of lost my edge from it too and when I went back that September we hadn't done it for two years that feeling when I left on the streetcar was like, oh yeah, that feeling. That's why you go out at 7 a.m., you wait, or sorry, 7 p.m., you wait till 8 p.m. to sign up, you wait three hours to play two songs, and then you get to take that feeling home with you, and you're like, that's why I do it. Now I remember. Mm -hmm. And there was a nice reassurance after all these years. And it's like it looking very dismal for like two, three years of like, is live music going to come back? And so many colleagues, you know, and, and other artists, you know, that were quitting, taking this toll. And you're like, okay, now. So let me kind of circle around now to this festival we did. And that's that's the whole basis out of this was like there was nowhere to go and I lived across the street from this park so I went down and saw the gazebo it had power outlets and I was like I'm tired of playing in front of a screen I don't want to play in front of a laptop anymore I want to play to people even if they 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 don't stick around if they just turn around and like acknowledge that there's I just want to see somebody's face while playing music make so, that connection exactly so that that day I was like filled with such joy and I was like okay I gotta continue this as much as possible and I would love to do a show here and uh, we did it so we finally did it and you joined us this Saturday for the community focus yeah. music festival and it was great it was beautiful it was I'm glad you were a part of it and uh, it's the first thing it was a lot of hard work it was a lot of putting it together put it together but it was also it wouldn't have been possible without artists like you and crew people and and putting because everybody gave you know everybody uh gave their time gave their talent and gave their labor so i'm very appreciative and uh the best feeling for me the whole day was like 
the surprise look on people's faces when they were witnessing the caliber of musicians. They weren't just walking by and like <clears throat> some dudes playing randomly playing guitar because it's a nice spot to play. They're they're legit blown away. Like holy, and they're like, the thing I heard all day was, oh, I've never, I didn't see this advertised anywhere, and it's like, well, we didn't have the budget, or we didn't have the time, or the manpower to really advertise it. But I was like, that was the start small and yeah, but that was a happy moment for me many times during the day where people were like shocked how good it was, mm -hmm. and that's what I tried to, that's what I was trying to display. It's like. There's so many gems in this city and we just don't get the opportunity to show people, you know, and it's also a very competitive city, uh, you know, and it's hard for local artists to get in festivals too, like big festivals like the Jazz Fest and all this stuff. They get eaten up with headliners and out of town people and it's like, no, I'm like, no, we have it all here. You don't need to bring in big artists like give us the budgets you know what i mean so that's what i was trying to prove and show to everybody that the talent's right here in our backyard not only with performers like yourself but the crew like you know we had top-notch sound people that day we had top-notch everything that yeah. day you know? and not and not just the 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 big names but uh, but even the the ones who are starting out like the local ones as you mentioned yeah you know it's like you know isn't there isn't there an, uh, an, uh, uh, enough light for all of us, not uh, not just one person? So I mean, exactly. you, you know, and because it's and and I and it's why like if there's one be uh, benefit I think on Spotify, it's that now you can scroll and and you hear one artist and hear what interests them, mm -hmm. and you're exposed to all these different ones. And it's it, it's why I tell I tell uh, 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 people to, uh, today with music. Know the masters. Know the ones that that pay, that paved the way. Like for uh, for example, let's say uh, let's say you're into uh, uh, Ariana Gr uh, uh, Grande. Who influenced her? Celine uh, Dion. Uh, Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, uh, Mar uh, Mar Mar Mariah Carey, and it's like, well, who influenced Mar Mariah Carey? Aretha Franklin, Ella Fitzgerald, Mahalia Jackson, and 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 and, and then and, and it's like you know who influenced. You know, uh, El Fitzgerald. So it's like know, uh, know the ones that that came before and that came yeah. before. So it helps you appreciate um, uh, popular music even even more. I mean, I, w I went to uh, Humber College for jazz as a vocal major, and that really opened my eyes to like the origins of of contemporary music. And 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 you learn, and it's because of jazz and blues that we have rock and roll and disco music and uh, uh, hip hop music and reggae and you know uh uh r&b soul i can go on on, on oh yeah and on. especially toronto in general like once you start talking to some of the ogs in toronto you're like man you jammed with what the fuck who like i don't know if you know this about kensington market but uh in the 60s uh there's like a huge folk movement through the 60s mm -hmm. you know, obviously uh, through Kensington and stuff like that. But uh, Rick James, before he was Rick James, he was in a band with Neil Young. Really? In the 60s. Interesting. Yeah, so, and Rick James, I guess, I can't, I don't, I don't remember what his real name is, but yeah. he... Um, but it, it's a, it's a, actually interesting that you mentioned him, because actually today is 20 years since he passed, may he rest in peace. Oh, so cocaine's a hell of a drug. Yeah. So it, <laughs> I just it, sorry that Dave so, Chappelle uh, sketch. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, it it is, but but I mean, you know, like uh, like the the ones that, that we lost. I mean, we'll always have it's the, the music mentioned. and the memories. Yeah, know? it's interesting you mentioned that. But I read the book by I read Shaky by uh, Neil Young's book, and that 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 fact really blew my mind because I was like, wow, that's interesting. It's like. You don't know, like like you said, you trace the roots, right? You see where the origins come from. And then uh, he spent so much time in Kensington that people thought he was from Toronto. Right. Until the draft came along. Mm -hmm. And because he's from Detroit. So they Rick James. So he started looking for him. And they're like, oh shit, you're from Detroit. Like they, that's how he found, like he was draft dodging, right? Like he was, uh, 
That's that's an interesting story I found out about uh, Kensington Market. And, yeah. Uh, so yeah, another funny another tie between us is uh, is this place here, this is the Air Canada Center. Yeah. So I I work there. I've been working there for twenty years. But I saw you there one day. Yeah. You were you were singing the national anthem, and you've done uh, actually you, you opened for was it Demi Lovato? Or you yeah. guys opened for or so it was or? yeah so so uh, it's a uh, it's with this uh, um, this group that I sing with. Uh, uh, it's called uh, uh, Forte uh, uh, Toronto G- uh, Gay Men's Chorus. So sorry to cut you off, but you guys have been doing that the anthems there for years, and that I didn't put it together until I knew you were part of that because that. They had done several uh, anthems performances, yeah. Raptors and, and Leafs, because I worked yeah. there for twenty years. So now, th- sorry, that rings a bell of of that connection. So sorry, and then yeah, so you was, um, got a part. When did you become part of that group? So I I I, uh, I joined in uh, in uh, twenty sixteen. So it's been uh, uh, um, eight years. But like the first time that I sang with with Forte uh, for the Blue Jays, it was in twenty eighteen because mm-hmm. like so it was their their uh, their Pride game in, in June and like we're the ones they they call for that one and and actually uh, 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 I think I think it was the um, organizers for the Jays they've said that our rendition of the national anthem is one of their favorites, which is why they 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 they, they love. What, when we sing it, and I did, I did it once uh, with Forte for the for the Raptors, and when the when the the Jays had their first uh, home game uh, 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 since COVID, so uh, we we um, we sang for the for them on that day. Oh nice! Uh, yeah, uh, uh, albeit with with some rules, like like some of the rules were we still had to, had to have face coverings like in between, but yeah, like yeah. but like on the field of stands you can take them off and you, and then you uh, uh, you, uh, you sing a them. Weird time. So yeah, yeah uh, it was, but uh, it was. Uh, it's been fun uh, uh, doing that, and the story with De- uh, Demi Lovato. So it was, uh, I think, uh, uh, Demi w- w- was in town. Um, it was right after we had, we had, we had a, a cabaret show in in Toronto, and uh, and we get this call saying, "Oh, uh, Demi's in town for two nights and wants to sing with uh, with her." And it's like, "What?" I'm like, "I'm like, hold on a minute." I'm like, "Demi Lovato, one of the biggest pop stars in in the world." wants to, to, to sing with her so it, it was at uh, at at Scotiabank uh, Arena uh, it was it, it was towards the end it was during her encore because her concept was to have this like big party uh, on the on on stage and gotcha. and and every night in the city she was in Demi had a, a different gay men's chorus singing with her so we sang uh, to, uh, uh, two songs during her encore it was uh, tell me love me and and sorry not uh, not, uh, not sorry so it, sick yeah, so that uh, that was pretty uh, um, surreal, uh, but it was um, it it was fun, and and I uh, I, I I love seeing big name uh, uh, artists giving uh, local uh, groups and artists that 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 uh, that chance, whether uh, whether it's one song or or whatever it is, and I uh, I admire uh, Demi for um, using her uh, her platform. To create uh, awareness on mental health, mm-hmm. so which uh, which uh, which um, now it's uh, it's great that mental health is be is being so openly di- uh, discussed. Whereas like not too not too lo- uh, long ago, uh, uh, people were still afra- afraid to to talk about their struggles and their challenges with me- uh, with mental health. Where where uh, whereas it's it's changing now. I mean I mean a lot has to be done, um, but but it's a uh, but, but it's heading uh, in the right direction. Where now. Um, we're living in a time where it's like it's okay to talk about what what you uh, what you go through with your mental health, whether it's uh, anxiety, de- uh, uh, depression, fill uh, fill in the blank. Yeah, well, it's not as um, I don't want to say the word taboo, but it's not as like uh, what I'm trying to say is that it's not uh, it's not so uh, uh, as stigmatized. That's the as, word I'm as, looking uh, for. Stig- sorry, uh, stigmatized. Yeah, my, as, my brain's gone. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's not as much as a stigma anymore. Where it's just like, uh, you know, someone would bring up the conversation and they make the room go quiet. Now it's like, uh, okay, um, you're suffering the same thing that I'm kind of suffering. It's yeah. it's very normalized. Yeah. And normalized to to share and to to because talk you're. Yeah, yeah, be, uh, because you're you're not uh, alone in in what uh, what you face, and, and now you telling your story 
gives other people courage and permission to tell their story yeah. and, and, and say, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I have, whether it's anxiety or, or, or depression or, or whatever it is, they, they don't feel so alone and they feel more comfortable uh, uh, um, talking about what they face. Yeah, and I find that even with music, it's like there's a lot more of that uh, with artists, you know, like uh, you don't have to tough it out all the time. You know what I mean? Right. You don't have to like, be, you yeah. know, like you can take a break. You can take like all this. There was, um, like I told you, I used to do a lot of the uh, house sites for the open for uh, a lot of the shows at the Air Canada Center. So I don't think I did a Demi Lovato show. I don't think I was there, but I did um, Stevie Wonder. And he he's did, the man. Yeah, he did the same thing. He's great. He, he ordered like, or he called the orchestra from Toronto, a, a string orchestra, and uh, he he stands up, and he's like, everybody stand up. So in the in the orchestra, and he goes, I need one person to freestyle. Who wants to do it? Really? And everybody sat down. It's like, one guy it's kept. Like, he's, he was still standing up. And he's like, you there. And obviously you can't see him. He's like, you. He's like, the one standing. He's like, me? He's like, yeah. He goes, let's go. And he just rips. And this guy starts ripping along with him. And, really? they, and then they go into uh, Palestine Paradise. Right into it. So it was really cool to see him utilize local people like that. And I saw that too. You two did a show as well. And they had a cover band that was like a solid YouTube cover band and they were from the GTA. So they pulled them out and they kind of staged it to look like they picked some random guys in the crowd to, to sing their song. But it was it was still cool that um, there was local people involved. You know what I mean? And, and somebody gave me, I, saw, I don't know if I saw this online or like uh, heard advice from somebody, but a good plan is to, and I think I might do this myself, reach out to the tours you want to play on and just reach out to them and give them your press package and all this shit and say da 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 if you roll into town you need somebody i i'm i might be a good fit for your you know and then you never know because it's like tours get backed up with stuff and then they have cancellations they have all this and then if they come to toronto and they're like oh shit we don't we don't have an opener Oh, this person contacted me. Like you never know, right? Like it's like, it's you. You never know until you throw it out there. So I've heard that is a good strategy to kind of like get on their radar mm -hmm. of like you know, and you're right. Like they might be looking for like a, a gay men's choir specifically, right? Or like this type of specific thing. And if you throw it at them, they're like, oh shit, that guy contacted me about this. Now it's in my head now that we're here in Toronto. And then, so uh, just one follow up question to that. Is it through an agency or are you guys already, you guys you already had the relationship with the Jays. Um, and so it was just like, they reached out to the group again. Uh, so I, like, I, I, I'm not, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think, I think um, so, uh, 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 someone in, in Forte know, uh, knows, um, uh, that's just saying you know, they had a relationship with them yeah, already. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like what's the what, what uh, uh what's the expression uh friends friends in high places. So it's yeah. like you know uh in in the in the arts it's a very small community. So you know uh, everybody knows someone from somewhere. So like when where there's the, the this connection there's that connection. So like you're you're uh, always gonna meet uh meet people that that that, that know that knows somebody whether it's a bit a big name or or someone lo uh, lo uh, local it's everything like, whatever, everything whatever it is. Can, like every if you if you look at production you look like you know behind the scenes people uh, talent uh, you know musicians it's all one degree of separation of knowing somebody like everywhere I go maybe less oh yeah probably like less I've, I remember you from this like uh, like we dig out painted lady again uh, Graham Graham, remember Graham? Graham Co yeah, 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 Graham yeah. Co. Yeah, yeah. So, I went to I went to Humber College with him. Oh so yeah, we, yeah. We go we we go way back. You guys were that part of that crew. Yep. Um, I was I work you know, a lot of production too, so I do the Country Music Awards, which I'm going to nice. next next month. 
uh, my friend that I came the up States with. Or? No, the, the Canadian one. Oh, okay. The smaller one. Uh, but my good friend that I came up with, like we went from TVA to all the way up, and he's the the, the technical producer now. So it's his show. So um, I went there. Uh, we were in Calgary two years ago, and I look off stage. We're like, "Hey, Graham," and he's like the guitar player for a local band. So it's like everywhere you go, like I know somebody, I've met somebody who knows somebody, and then eventually you're like. You're in the family, in the circle, like, and it's all, especially this country, it's all connected, like production, talent, you know, um, everybody behind the scenes. It's a, it's a very small community, which is nice. I like it because it's now it's like, oh, uh, when you go to this town, talk to this person. And this is kind of also the purpose of my podcast, too, is like to kind of connect us in this country. And we're so like geographically far apart on this country, but it's like, there's not a lot of us. So if we all start working together, we can do things like help with accommodations, help with this, help with this. Like if you, you have a friend in BC and you don't need to bring all this equipment over and like, like I'm going to Edmonton and I have a friend who's a drummer. So he's helping put together a band for me over there. So I don't need to, I would love to fly my band across the country if I had a budget, but it's like, he's helping me organize, uh, live musicians there once, when I go do shows there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun, um, going across the country, meeting people and, uh, yeah, it's really nice coming full circles, like connecting with you again. Cause it reminds me of like all the years that we've done done this you know mm -hmm. and it's like I'm glad you were part of that festival thing that was a, a cool we had such a range of artists yeah it was and, fun and I was like I couldn't explain to people because they're like well what kind of music is it and I was like a bit of everything a lot <laughs> it's like everything whatever yeah. you like is pretty much there mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah. take your pick. There's not yeah. many love, yeah, uh, 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 love, genres yeah. we didn't cover. Oh yeah, yeah. I love I love the variety. Yeah, and that's what, and that's the also that's the point I'm trying to make is that the that's Toronto in a nutshell. Yeah, that's you have that selection every night, and that's that's the good thing and the tough part about Toronto is like, you know, from it's a, a melting a collaboration comments. point of view. It's a it's huge yeah. from like. A selection of places to play it's very huge but at the same time it's a daunting task as an individual artist to compete yeah. in this city it's a it's, it's a mel so it's a melting huge. it's a melting pot of of cultures and yeah and and music i mean like 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 my like my my parents when they when they first came here to uh to toronto uh i mean back then uh there were so many different cultures um coming to the city and still uh it still is this big melting pot yeah well, thank you for being here. Thanks for, thanks thanks for having from, me. Uh, hitting my wall. And <laughs> after the delay, uh, it's been a long day. But just uh, give me uh, a little, in, in the audience, uh, like a little uh, glimpse into what's going on in your future. You're working on something new. You've got some shows coming up. Uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, you can find me on uh, on Facebook and uh, and um, and Instagram just under my name, um, Aaron D'Souza. Uh, you can find my music on on uh, Spotify and and and, I, and iTunes. Um, so uh, as far uh, as far as new uh, new stuff, uh, yeah. So I'm on I'm on, I, I'm on um, break now for the summer from the from the groups I sing with. I'm all, I'm also in this uh, other group named uh, named Tempo. It's it's similar in, in some ways to Forte, but we we do more more arrangements of of pop, of pop songs. Mm. So in uh, September, uh, 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 I'll be starting my my next uh, seasons with um with them, um, and uh, and yeah, I, I just want to keep um, um, writing as much as I, much as I can and and continue meeting other music uh, musicians, um, maybe 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 try uh, uh, try some new material at an open mic night and and see what's out there i love it i love it man thanks for coming by thanks for Thank chatting you. and it's uh been great maybe uh i'll see you at a raptor game doing the anthem yeah uh, okay yeah you, you, you know you never know more than likely <laughs> okay. thanks buddy thank you all right cheers thank you